Sarah Resnick takes the reader through her exploration of the world of heroin and recovery in a first-person narrative interjected with news reports, interviews, medical journals, and an intensely personal and increasingly intertwined relationship with her heroin-addicted uncle, who is always directly addressed as you. Despite the seeming lack of credibility of using second person in a non-fiction piece, she separates the sections on her uncle and juxtaposes them with research, like here where she compiles headlines of news reports and implicitly shames the media for their reporting on heroin only after the, after the death of a famed celebrity, and also for their sensationalist use of language like scourge, epidemic proportions, and the combative use of call to arms and fighting back. Yet, the majority of her creative liberty comes in the sections on her uncle, like here where she describes the monotonous routine for a low-income addict uh, navigating the complex map of social work and medications in a city, and the constant walk and wait, walk and wait between all these appointments. Now, her sections grow denser, with a greater use of statistics uh, and medical research on prescriptions, and she, her commitment grows as she even travels to Canada to see Insight, the only legal safe injection site in North America for herself. Each lens is presented in isolated segments, yet they are constantly compared and juxtaposed against each other. The cold, untelling statistics, the paranoid fantasia of her uncle, the hyperbole of the news, and the jargon of the medical journals, all a part of the same complex story. Thus, her work does not seem to be dishonestly skewed, because it itself is a self-exploration of the evidence. And in the same paragraph, where she comes to the tentative conclusion uh, that she supports the harm reduction movement and legalization, she also states, it is clear that no one, no neuroscientist, psychologist, psychiatrist, or physician can explain what addiction is or account for its contradictions. Indeed, the author's remarkable journey of discovery, of intimacy with her uncle, of years of research and interviews and of moral contemplation ends all on a note of uncertainty. With this with no follow-up on her uncle, no definitive conclusion on the research, rather simply on this sentence, referring to the uncle's daughter, I will write to her, I think, the think throwing uncertainty on the definitiveness of the will. Though indeed, this is where my own interpretive bias enters, as I have actually had some of the harm reduction training she mentions, and more exposure to heroin addicts than the average person, through multiple friends, family, and through working through an NGO that deals with homelessness and substance abuse. Thus, I was deeply sympathetic to her approach, and her commitment to her uncle and to the investigation, and her honest thoughts and impatience and confusion throughout. I saw so many of the people I've worked with in her uncle, and I saw myself in her reflections. But I was hoping that more context may have balanced my interpretation. So since the piece mainly covered recovery and harm reduction, I figured I'd research the cause of addiction itself. And when you do this, you'll inevitably come across Rat Park, a 30-year-old study that asserts essentially that addiction is based uh, on environmental factors, seen here by some sensationalist um, articles like forget opioids, get high on connection, through this very popular, but actually uh, misconstrued TED talk, through oversimplified YouTube videos, even through a comic. So I resort back to the science itself. Here's the original study, but yet there were some issues with replicability of this study. So I, I keep going. Here's two studies that assert, no, we couldn't actually find the same conclusions of this original study, yet here are three that could. So without any way to synthesize across um, all of these scientific studies, and without knowing how many are on both sides, I keep digging. Uh, I go here and I look at Vietnam, which is often called the human rat park experiment. This one asserts where it's inconclusive and may be a fluke, but this one asserts that the evidence is extremely conclusive. This NPR actually goes back to sensationalizing the heroin epidemic in Vietnam, saying how it can help us about breaking bad habits and making better New Year's resolutions. So I keep going, I go to uh, psychological studies that somehow incorporate sexuality into it. I go and I find there's a political divide along um, how we view addiction, where right-wing voters emphasize moralistic and individualistic tendencies, uh, and left-wing voters support psychological and societal ideas of addiction. So I continue, I, I look at philosophical ideas of addiction, neurobiological ideas, and throughout this, I can't help, but, like the author, but find this unsatisfying dichotomy between these misleading headlines uh, in the media and these mountains of unsynthesized reports across disciplines. And as my mind tries to process this incredible jargon, I can't help but wander back to the people I've seen, the people I've come in contact with, with these addictions. And the news doesn't fit them, with its oversimplification and its provocations and its constant need to fetishize and sensationalize human suffering and the medical journals that are so distant and so wide-ranging. 
So my search for context, rather than changing my interpretation, leads me down a very similar path as the author. The only thing I can consistently come back to is my personal connections, the humanity I see in those people, whether it be my high fashion friend injecting in a New York nightclub, to the currently homeless injecting in the streets of San Francisco. I simply have a desire for them to be treated and humanized. So. How, just like how Sarah Resnick used her uncle as the center underlying story in her investigation, there is but one thing I know behind this overload of inconclusivity, is that beyond the media, the science, and the controversy lies simply people.